Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and there's a new feature that's been added to Untangle in version 16.3. There's a lot of little changes, but the one particular big change that I like is the two-factor being added with a QR code generator right into OpenVPN. This is a nice enhancement. It doesn't just add it to the end of the password. It actually creates the proper config, so it will prompt you for the two-factor. We're going to cover how that works. It's one of those little things that a few people have asked me about, so I wanted to cover that particular new enhancement on there and show you just how simple it is to get configured. Before we dive into the details videos, if you'd like to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hire us button right at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, including some of the silly shirts that we have, Go ahead and use the affiliate links down below to get your deals and discounts on products and services we talk about it and our silly cat shirts or this new uh, condensed New England clam router, which has been just something I know it's stupid, but we really laugh at it at the office. And I know some of you may find it entertaining. Either way, let's dive into Entangle now. All right, let's start right here with the change log for 16.3.2. There's a lot of little fixes around WireGuard, some fixes around the IPS system, AD, and fixes for things like web filter rules based on URL conditions, and now evaluate the host names based on SNI. So a lot of great little fixes, but the one I want to focus on here is, of course, the TOTP for OpenVPN. Now, the thing that really I like that they did here, and it's the MFA and OpenVPN requires a standalone TOTP-based application for the system to work and it's your choice which one you get to use i bring it up because a lot of vpn companies try to have you load another app from the complete management standpoint of that every time you have to have the users load another app to authenticate against something that can be well more management overhead that you have to deal with totp is a great standard it's well documented there's plenty of apps that support it my particular favorite app is aegis authenticator but you can also use google authenticator and authy is another popular solution so whichever one works for you you can use and maybe what you've already standardized on one in your stack and you say, hey, this is what my users use for all these different sites that all support TOTP. So the great feature is being that they do this, including they have the, and we'll show how this works, MFA key code generator. So now let's take a look at how this actually gets implemented. So over here in Untangle, we're going to go to apps. We're going to go to OpenVPN. We're going to go to server. Just set up a really basic authentication server here. We have the default group and we have the client config. Now, first I'm gonna show you real quick here over in config local directory. Here is that user Tom, last name Thomas. And right here is the, well, there's two ways you can look at it. You can see if it's set up by being grayed out versus being, you know, right here where it's a little bit less than grayed out. But if you click edit, this will let you generate the new key or click here to display the QR code. It can't get much simpler than that. You go scan the QR code and use that with your phone, away you go. My first complaint though is that this right here is not something I can click and copy and paste, but I mean, it's not too long to type it in if you wanna do a manual entry, but either way, they have the QR code and that's where most of the people are going to be doing it is click on the QR code and away you go. So go back over to apps, open VPN, and I wanna show what the client config looks like. So we're gonna go ahead and download this client config and look at what they're doing in here. This is the part that's important. So we have this config, and then we have static challenge TOTP code. And this is what changes how this works. Normally in other systems, and I've talked about this before on the channel, OpenVPN would just have you add to the password. So you would take the static password and add in the TOTP authentication to get the user authenticated. Now, obviously, for the user standpoint, typing in their password and then appending the TOTP code on there, that can create some confusion. What this does is brings up a second prompt inside of the latest version of OpenVPN that's current as of July 2021, and we'll have them have a second spot to insert their code. Now, it already does have, because of these certificates that are in here, technically to compromise OpenVPN. You're going to need the username and password. Those are important. But having the port open, such as the default 1194 port for OpenVPN, will not let the person trying to get into your system in. They also need these certificates. So in 
a basic way, yes, OpenVPN does have two-factor because it has these certificates. So they have to have the username, password, and certificates. What the TOTP adds is technically a third factor of authentication, but because these ones are static, they can be compromised. And the threat angle that could come from this, of course, is if a end user's computer was compromised and they had OpenVPN installed, well, now that threat actor who has access to that has those certificates that then allows them to start trying usernames and passwords. So this is where TOTP comes in to hopefully save the day. Now I have a Windows machine with OpenVPN installed and we went over here to import a config file. That file we downloaded, I downloaded this system here. You just hit import file, import the file, and it'll show up here in the list. Now I have this set up right now, so I can try to ping the server showing it's not connected, and we'll go ahead and show the connection. This is the internal IP address of the Untangle server. We go here to OpenVPN, and we're just gonna go to connect. And there's the username, there's the password we'll put in, and then we gotta put in the TOTP code. Now, one downside, so to speak, is going to be even if the user saves their password, which I know is greatly convenient, and convenience is the enemy of security at some point, the convenience of saving the password will not get them too much further. So whether or not you've administratively overrode this or not, still up to you, but uh, they still, it won't actually save the response, even if they do this. So we'll go ahead and uh, scroll down, get the password, well, the one-time password. I don't really need to save this password because no matter what, it's gonna prompt me. Put that in, hit OK. It verified all those factors and away we go. We're able to transfer data, up arrow ping. I'm able to ping and talk internally to the Untangle server. I'm on the inside of the network now. Go ahead and stop that. Now, like I said, if it drops, it will keep prompting them for 2FA. So even if I do, and we'll go ahead and disconnect and we're going to go ahead and connect, and this time we'll save the password. Check this box. As soon as it, yep. And here we go. It should time out and then start pinging again. Now we'll do it one more time. Disconnect, which will drop that. Do a connect again. The password saved, so that still happened, but still going to require TOTP because it does not have that factor because the server, of course, is validating it. 916. Connects, and away we go. It's going to start just any second now. It should start pinging again. And there we go, we got data and traffic passing. So I think this is a welcome addition, that extra layer of security. I'm happy they added it. I'm happy it's implemented in a relatively easy way for end users uh, to be able to do this. And for those wondering, does it work like this in Linux? Matter of fact, yes, it does. If you do it from the command line in Linux, it will bring up an extra prompt uh, when doing it So for the two factor. So depending on how you configure things, but that may not be ideal in the Linux world to do, but I'll leave that part up to you. Anyways, this is Tom Lawrence want to share this with you uh, comment down below if you thought this was interesting if you want to learn more about untangle as a whole i've got reviews i've done i'll leave links to that video down below it's going to be a slightly older version but most of the features are the same except for this being more recent than the video i've done uh, but nonetheless we are a reseller just full disclosure in case anyone's wondering or wants to hire us for consulting on untangle and this is tom lawrence i'll see you guys online thanks and thank you for making it to the end of this video if you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a share project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there is a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.